So as many of you may know by now, the Zack Snyder cut for the Justice League movie is going to be released on HBO Max. And while many people, many fans out there are very excited for this, how about those Puritans? Oh right, yeah, they hate everything, so of course they're not excited about this. Ugh, <laughs> you know, nothing new there. Hey, what is going on everybody? How are you all doing today? I hope you all are having a wonderful and fantastic day today, and if not... Hopefully you all will have it better tomorrow. So apparently, the Puritan media absolutely bought hurt, outraged, over the fact that the Justice League Zack Snyder cut is going to be released on HBO Max. And, you know, they are so upset, several outlets are talking about this, about how it's a bad thing. So, looking at this title from Screen Rant, their article stating, Justice League Zack Snyder cut sets a bad president. You know, how dare you release this, right? You know, like, how dare you? That's that's the way they see it. And then you go back a few days ago to where they had an article stating, Harley Quinn showrunner addresses controversial Justice League jokes, supports the Snyder cut. So the showrunner was actually in support of the Snyder cut being released. You know, they were one that was hoping that it would be released, right? So this was not a bad thing, and many fans have been waiting for years for this to come out but of course the moment that it's announced that oh it's gonna come out you know yeah that's when the media just goes wild they are so upset over it. i mean take a look at these articles and you'll see a lot of similarities amongst one another releasing the snyder could of justice league sets a troubling president another one why releasing the justice league snyder cut sets a dangerous president now you're probably wondering well, why are they saying this, and what could this potential dangerous precedent be? Well, here's another article stating, Why releasing the Snyder Cut is a dog whistle for toxic fandoms. You know, the typical, oh look, the fans are the bad guys, they're toxic, they're terrible, how dare they? You know, it goes back to that, trying to call fans ist and phobes, as we already have seen them do multiple times over. You have another article here. Stating, HBO releasing the Snyder Cut of Justice League shows toxic fans are winning. You know, gotta love how they really hate on fans. You know, just treating all of us awful. You know, there's no reason for that. And it's actually good whenever you have studios that actually listen to their audience. You know, that's actually a better thing. Because, you know, giving the fans what they want. That's not a bad thing. It's never bad <laughs> to listen to fans. But... Apparently, within the Puritan's eyes, oh, it's the worst thing ever. How dare fan service exist? You know, <laughs> they go on about it all the time. They're absolute idiots. So take a look at this article here. Releasing the Justice League Snyder Cut is great for fans, but it sets a bad precedent for Hollywood. After three years of campaigning, the Snyder Cut is finally becoming a reality. Zack Snyder used a recent viral watch party of Man of Steel to announce the Snyder Cut is coming to HBO Max next year after the film was fully completed. The situation is a complex one, resulting from a unique confluence of events. There is a director and actors who are willing to revisit a project that should have wrapped up three years ago and a new streaming service eager to commission new content. It's because of this that the Justice League Snyder Cut is even happening. Without the streaming service, it's unlikely Warner Bros. would have been willing to fund the project for it to release in theaters. Now, I'll at least agree with that statement. If HBO Max wasn't happening, this probably wouldn't be happening. I mean, I'll at least agree with that one statement here. But everything else in this article is absolute trash. <laughs> so, here we go. This balance of power in Hollywood has been charging for a long time, driven in large part by the rise of social media. Every detail of a film's production is now public knowledge. Casting announcements are poured over. Set photos are disseminated online. Scripts leak. Trailers are analyzed to the ninth degree and more. Studios are increasingly taking note of the online reactions. They are becoming a critical factor in the decision-making process. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, and sometimes the finished product is far better as a result. Widespread criticism of poor CGI and Sonic the Hedgehog led to extensive improvements, for example. But for every Sonic, there is a Suicide Squad, where Warner Bros. attempted to change the film's tone and style to fit in with popular trailers, and as a result created a mess. Now, <laughs> here's the big thing. It was a good thing that Sonic the Hedgehog was changed. I mean, if you look at the before and after images, I can tell you right now, if they had went with the original Sonic design for this movie, this movie would not have been as successful as it actually became. 
the good thing was is that the director asked people's opinions. He asked what the fans wanted, and they said, please change it. And in the end, of course, the after image, which is basically the classic Sonic design we all know and love, well, this was good. This was a beautiful change that, had it not been for fans being able to share their opinions, then there's no way that this would have been changed. And I'm going to say it right now. If you look at that old design, Sonic needed Jesus' help. Because, good lord, that was a horrible, horrible design from hell. I mean, seriously, that was just awful. The redesign, definitely better. Glad that they went back to a more Sonic look. And I think that saved the film overall. Most fan reactions are spontaneous with little thought going into them. But the Justice League Cider Cut campaign was an exception to that rule. The fans didn't simply fume online, creating Twitter hashtags and retweeting juicy bits of information. They actively organized, encouraged by the director and even the cast. The Snyder Cut campaign has already inspired countless copycats. Irate Star Wars fans petitioned Lucasfilm to declare Star Wars The Last Jedi non-canon, and hell, it, it should be non-canon, let's be real. Game of Thrones viewers called for a rewrite to Season 8. Yep, because, uh... From what I know, for the fans, you know, fans hated it. You know, I wasn't a Game of Thrones fan. You know, I was more of somebody kind of looking from the outside in, you know. And, oh, that that was terrible. <laughs> that was terrible what they did. The latest sequel trended on Twitter, and there is even a push for David Ayer cut of Suicide Squad. None of the campaigns have become anywhere near as well orchestrated as the Snyder Cut, but they all have vocal, sometimes toxic fans attempt to follow the Snyder's Cut lead. You see, this is the thing, though. Whenever a studio listens to the fans, you know, that's a good thing. That's something that, you know, pleases fans. And, you know, this is why I've always been with someone to think that, you know, hey, you know, the studio should listen to their fans more than try to do the stupid stuff that they've done. Because we've seen so many terrible movies come out in recent years that either are reboots or just uncreative. I mean, Jar Jar Abrams, you know, to me, Star Wars Episode Seven was bad enough. I hated that film, still hate it to this very day. And Jar Jar Abrams, I'm not a fan of it. You know, I think that he just always redoes the same thing. He always throws in the mystery box in every movie that he does, and, you know, the answers usually are not satisfying. You have Roundhead Ryan Johnson, who he himself hated Star Wars and still hates it, and he wanted to divide the fandom. Well, you did it. You know, you did it. Congratulations, Roundhead Ruin Johnson. You did exactly what you set out to do. You ruined Star Wars for all the fans. Congratulations, you talentless hack. Oh, and speaking of that, so since we're talking about Alita, you know, the Puritans over here, you know, they defended The Last Jedi, obviously, and when it came to Alita coming out, because Alita came out around the same time that Captain Marvel did, what were they doing? They were trying to say that Alita's a terrible movie, don't go see it. And then they were trying to say that, oh yes, Captain Marvel's the best thing ever, Brie Larson's fantastic, even though she has the acting range of a plank of wood and she has the personality of a monster. But, you know, I'm just saying, because, I mean, you look at Alita, you know, Alita wasn't a movie that was bad at all. And you want to talk about an actual strong female protagonist? Yeah, Alita is that. And they did very well with Alita. I mean, fantastic movie. It's much better than what Captain Marvel was trying to say that, oh, this is a strong independent female character. No, she wasn't. She was a plank of wood that was nothing but a jerk to everybody that nobody cared about. And it was all about politics. Everybody knows what it was. It was absolutely excruciating and terrible. And Brie Larson doesn't have any talent. She's talentless. <laughs> I mean, seriously. But Alita, fantastic movie, and, you know, they tried to downplay this, trying to say that the fans were the problem. They were toxic, you know, and they were ist and phobes for not liking Captain Marvel and liking Alita, you know, all this stupid stuff. Absolutely ridiculous. All this means is HBO Max is inevitably sending a simple message. Fan pressure works. The most vocal, well-organized, and high-profile fan campaign of all time has successfully achieved its goal. Of course, the reasons are unique, and no doubt the decision-makers would insist they haven't set a precedent at all. But the most toxic fans won't see it that way. Inspired by the success of Justice League's Snyder Cut campaign, they will continue to exert their influence over other studios, networks, and streaming services. They will take the Snyder Cut as evidence, power, now lies with them, not with the filmmakers. You see, here's the thing, though. Back in the day, before social media became a big thing, you had to send in letters. I remember when DC used to have uh, events where they would have fans send in letters to uh, be able to, you know, say what they wanted in a certain comic. You know, it's kind of like whenever they had, uh, you know, Red Hood Robin, Jason Todd, whenever they had a campaign back in the day that you could call in 
and they had it to where you could vote to see if Jason Todd should live or die. And in the end, of course, the fans voted, and they voted for the death of Jason Todd. And so then, of course, you know, you had the comic where the Joker was the one who ended the life of Jason Todd. And, you know, that's a big thing to look at, is that, you know, they did that for the fans. You know, that was the reason why they did it. They let the fans have a voice. And that's a good thing for the fans to be able to share their opinions. <laughs> but the uh, Puritans don't think that. Puritan media hates it. Hollywood has crossed a cultural Rubicon, and there is no going back. While fan petitions have worked in the past, specifically with regards to canceled TV shows being picked up by other networks and spinoffs being ordered due to fan demand, it's different for film. Expect to see fan campaigns become the norm, not the exception, most likely using aspects of the Snyder Cut campaign as a model. It's an overly simplistic treatment, failing to understand the unique circumstances that led to the Justice League Snyder Cut, but it will happen regardless. You see, they absolutely can't stand this. It's like how, for example, you know, the media, they hate the fandom menace. You know, and they've done everything they can to try to paint the fandom menace, which is a you know group of Star Wars fans tried to paint them as the bad guys, when in reality, Phantom Menace, they are the real fans. <laughs> you know, as to where you see Lucasfilm, what have they done? Lucasfilm has done nothing more than ignore that and try to ruin Star Wars as much as they possibly can. Zack Snyder may share black and white stills from his films, but the real world is far from black and white. That means it is possible to see both the best and the worst in the Snyder Cut campaign. Over the years, many people, critics especially, were targets of online harassment and hate, with some receiving threats as well. By releasing the Snyder Cut through one lens, it could be seen as a studio condoning or at least accepting the part of the fandom, which shouldn't be the case. See, this is what they continue to do. They continue to say that, oh, no, 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 forget the fans. Their opinions don't matter. Get it out of here. That's never the way you should ever look at things because, you know, when it comes to people, you know, when it comes to some studios, for example, what was it that got them as big as they were? Oh, well, I don't know, maybe the fact that the fans supported them. You know, fan support is a huge thing. And if you do what the comic book industry, for example, has done, where you attack your fans and you treat them awful, oh, yeah, they're not going to want to come back. And, you know, Puritan media, we've seen them attack fans of multiple different series all the time. You know, it's absolutely infuriating to see this stuff. It shows you how dumb these people actually are. And it shows you why people themselves don't care about these journalist websites. Because these journalist websites, all they do is make clickbait articles, and then they make fun of the fans. These journalist websites are nothing but trash, and nobody cares about them. I mean, that's a fact. The problem, though, is that these people, the ones who are genuinely care about Zack Snyder and his work, are not the ones who will draw inspiration for the Snyder Cut campaign. Rather, it is the bullies and misogynists. Oh, there's the ist right there, see? The people who tore the fan base apart and who gave DC fans a bad name. Who will believe themselves vindicated. They will pause for breath, celebrate their victory, and then move on to their next celebrate. Worse still, discounting the business reasons behind HBO's Max decision to commission the Snyder Cut, they will assume their trolling swung it. Oh no, the trolls. Oh, because of trolling, apparently. The Snyder Cut may well be cathartic. It is sure to a dramatic improvement over the Frankenstein's monster that was released in 2017, but it also sets a very bad precedent for Hollywood. Also what, it's a bad thing to listen to fans. That's what you're saying. You're basically saying that fans are ist and phobes, and that it's bad to listen to fans. No, it's not bad to listen to your fans. That's always a very important thing that any studio should be doing. They should listen to their fans, and... You know, they should ignore this stupid political crap that keeps going on and actually produce good entertainment. And, you know, whenever you don't listen to the fans and then you decide to do what Hollywood's been doing with these movies and making terrible movies or trying to insert certain political agendas here or there, yeah, nobody wants to see any of it. Nobody cares about it. And fan opinions matter. They're very important. But, you know, of course, when it comes to these Puritans, you know, here at the media, all they want to do is just completely sit over here, make up whatever lies they can, say that fan service is bad, and call all fans toxic, or call them, you know, istrophobes to try to say that, oh, look, it's bad, don't listen to them. 
This is why nobody cares for the Puritan media, and this is why the Puritan media always fails every single time. But anyways, let me know what you think about this entire situation down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here, and make sure you are still subscribed because YouTube is unsubscribing people from all their favorite channels, so make sure you are still subscribed to all your favorite channels. Hit the video with a like, and also be sure to share the video on social media, spread the word, and get it out there. It's greatly appreciated, and it really helps out the channel a lot. Also, be sure to follow me on Discord. We have a wonderful community there. Not only that, but it will keep you up to date on when the newest videos will be released, as well as any other upcoming events in the near future so be sure to follow me on discord the link is in the description down below but anyways i hope you all have yourselves a wonderful and fantastic day today and remember if today was not a good day tomorrow could always be better take care of yourselves and everyone around you and have yourselves a good one out there everybody